man looks back on the Aurora movie theater shooting and remembers the life of a friend. The events to honor the 12 lives cut short a decade ago. Plus... I've lost confidence. I was in the stock market a couple of years ago and I'm completely out. And I'm a retired guy, so... I have to live with that money. We're breaking down what Colorado's June jobs report means to you and some ways you can prepare for whichever direction the economy turns next. And Colorado gas stations waging war at the pump. Why businesses are driving down prices amid high inflation and supply chain shortages. Good morning and welcome to Denver 7 News. I'm Jessica Crawford. And I'm Katie LaSalle. Thank you so much for joining us here on this Saturday morning. Let's start with some of the stories we're following for you this weekend. There's a lot going on across Colorado. County Fair season kicks off today, starting with the Weld County Fair. It has a long list of animal shows over the next week, including the first ever ranch rodeo. And we're told the Junior Livestock Show will have 245 lots this year. The Weld County Fair runs today through August 1st. Sounds like fun. Well, a heads up for hikers starting today. El Dorado Canyon State Park will require reservations on weekends and holidays through September 15th. Officials say that it's to control the crowds and to guard against wear and tear on the trails. Another big issue at El Dorado Canyon has been finding parking. Yeah, very popular place in other counties. They've actually found some different ways to alert people when their parks are full. Jefferson County has an app called Lotspot and Larimer County has a new text and email system. So if you're heading outside today, expect partly cloudy to mostly clear skies early on and a few storms and showers popping up into the late afternoon and early evening hours first starting into the mountains and spreading across the plains. This morning, though, a gorgeous shot of Long's Peak over Rocky Mountain National Park. Temperatures are already in the 80s here across the Denver area. 87 already out at the airport. We do have another ozone action alert day. If you suffer any respiratory issues, uh, may want to limit time outdoors today or just try and stay cool through this afternoon. No heated advisor in place for the Front Range and Plains again today, but over the western slope in Grand Junction, high heat building once again with a heat advisory in effect until at least 8 o'clock tonight. So typically at this time in late July, we see highs average in the low 90s. 97 is our expected high this afternoon. Triple digits are the record, but we have one hot day on the way for today, and then tomorrow we have a cool down. More thunderstorms and showers through the rest of the weekend. I'll take you through the full future cast coming up. Colorado is remembering the 10-year anniversary of the Aurora movie theater shooting. Yeah, the community is honoring the memory of the victims who lost their lives on July 20th of 2012 with several events today. Number 7's Micah Smith is live for us at one of those events happening right now. Micah. Yeah, Katie and Jessica, I'm staying off camera because I want you to see all of these lovely faces participating in the Hero's Journey 5K today. We're starting here at the Aurora Metro Station, very close to the Century 16. That's the site of the 2012 Aurora Theater shooting. And the event officially began just now. We got to see it kick off. I will say if you were with us at 7 a.m., you may remember I mentioned the scholarship that this event will benefit. Well, I have more details on that for you. This will be, all the proceeds from this will go to the Zach Goldich Opportunity Scholarship. Now, Zach is an Aurora, Colorado native who was in the theater next to the theater where the Aurora shooting happened. However, a bullet went through the wall and Zach was shot in the neck. Zach would recover from that injury. He spent two seasons in the NFL and he is now a South Metro firefighter. He wanted to give back to people, um, people who have had hardship and have gone through pain in their lives by starting a scholarship called the Zach Goldich Opportunity Scholarship. Now that scholarship will benefit an Aurora Public Schools student and Goldich is actually partnering with the Aurora Public Schools Foundation to make all of this happen. Now all of the runners and walkers, they've already moved past the finish or the starting line that is they're headed toward the finish line, which is at the 720 Memorial. This will be again a 5K. We'll head down to the finish line here in just a minute and uh, we'll be checking back in with you at 930. But for now, reporting live, Micah Smith, Denver 7. Micah, thank you so much. Colorado's June jobs report is out now. State labor officials say unemployment fell a tenth of a percent to 3.4 percent. And that's actually the lowest since the start of the pandemic and better than most of the rest of the country. The national unemployment rate is 3.6 percent. 
And while it sounds great that most Coloradans are employed, when you add to the mix rising interest rates, you're paying more for your car, your credit card loans, even your mortgage. Yeah, and inflation making everything just more expensive. It can be hard to make sense of our economy as a whole. It is a complex situation, and our Denver 7's Rob Harris walks us all through it. We have a lot of headlines flying at us about the economy, and they can oftentimes be at odds with each other. On the one hand, Colorado's latest jobs report looks good, and that's a good sign for our economy. But on the other hand, inflation still remains pretty high, and the Federal Reserve is looking at raising interest rates even higher to try to calm it down. And that could be a bad sign for our economy. If we do enter a recession, or we're in one already, it will be one unlike any we've experienced in recent cycles. This is Caleb Silver, Editor-in-Chief for Investopedia. He acknowledges it can be hard to sift through the noise of the headlines and get a good grasp of what's going on in our pandemic-affected economy. Well, we're facing rising inflation up above 9%, where everything from food and energy to rent keeps rising. But the jobs market, the labor market, remains very strong, and consumers are hanging in there. We've never had a situation quite like this, where demand Demand remains very, very strong while prices remain sky high. It's a really interesting dynamic. That interesting dynamic was on full display out on 16th Street Mall, where there were plenty of people shopping and eating. I think I'm excited that we survived all of that and I, we don't feel affected by it. But there was also anxiety for what could lay down the road. I've lost confidence. I was in the stock market a couple of years ago and I'm completely out. And I'm a retired guy, so. I have to live with that money. I'm not spending any money. We're going to do things that we already had planning to do, but not, we're not buying cars. <laughs> <laughs> As it turns out, this could all be the most important sign because there's one metric that Investopedia pays attention to above the rest for economic outlook, consumer spending. And there are signs it could be slowing down. The consumers start to pull back and start to tighten their belts because they either fear a recession or they feel that they're already in one personally. Then you're going to see businesses start to rein in spending as well, which would mean less hiring, which would mean less expansion, and that could really accelerate a recession. For Denver 7, I'm Rob Harris. So what should we do as we watch these economic figures? Silver suggests having enough extra cash on hand to cover at least six months worth of expenses and paying down any credit card debt you have as interest rates keep rising. That might be easier said than done. Denver 7 is committed to 360 in-depth reporting on the economy, and we want to hear what's impacting you, your family, your business. Is it monthly housing costs, rising grocery costs, child care? And if you've found a way to stretch your dollar, we want to hear that too. You can email 360 at the denverchannel.com. We read every email you send. Well, the new 988 mental health phone number is proving to be a much needed lifeline here in the U.S. In the weeks since it's launched, more than 96,000 calls, texts and chats have been made. Those numbers are up about 45 percent from calls made the week before the transition to the former suicide hotline number. You can now dial 988 to get connected with trained mental health counselors anytime, day or night. And this comes as a new Colorado agency is working to get more mental health care workers. The Behavioral Health Administration formally launched this month. The Denver Business Journal reports the agency wants to have a plan in place by September. It will include outreach to middle and high schoolers who are interested in studying behavioral health. Well, friends, it's going to be another scorcher of a day across the Denver area. And you may be thinking about taking a dip in the pool or the lake to cool off. But before you do that, what Colorado Parks and Wildlife wants you to know. But first, the term of Denver Mayor Michael Hancock is coming to an end. The legacy he's hoping to leave behind in the Mile High City and his priorities passing off to the next administration.